Well, the time's finally upon us. You get to open your season after two weeks on the road. How excited is the team to be back uh, this week to take on the Jacksonville State Club? We're really excited to be at home. We uh, had a team meeting last night. You know, I think we have 119 guys on the team. And <clears throat> first two weeks, you think about getting ready for your first game and just the excitement of the season finally being upon you. And the reality of it is, is that not everybody travels. Um, and so that's just one of the one of the bummers of college football and playing in Massachusetts and playing in the state of Washington for the guys that don't get to go. So this will be the first week that we all get to be together, and that's a big deal for us, and we're excited about that. Awesome. Coach, the stadium got a facelift in the offseason. Fans will get to see this team play in the new Crosby Field. How excited are you for them to see that, the changes that have gone on, specifically with the factory? You're really excited. I, it's... <clears throat> When we watch film from last year is when you see the track, um, you know, it's just that, that reminder of, wow, it, it really looks different. It, it really does. Um, and I've said this every time, you know, our track program is phenomenal and has earned and deserves its own standalone facility, and that's being built. And I know that the, the track staff from the get-go has been for this change in this move. So having said all of that, I mean, it looks and feels like a football stadium. Um, and <clears throat> I think people are going to love it. Coach, in the Washington game, your special teams, block kick, block punt, Jesus Gomez hits a 57-yarder. What do you attribute the special team success to when, when they play that well? <clears throat> Number of factors. Starts. You know, I believe with the, the culture, I think our football program has and will always continue to believe that it's one of two um, critical components to winning a game on Saturday. And so when I say culture, though, our guys, we don't have to convince our best players of that. Our team understands, knows, believes in uh, special teams. We've had outstanding leadership. Um, you know, with our special teams units. Coach T. Garden has done a phenomenal job in coordinating and leading that. Uh, I think if you talk to any of our specialists, you talk to our staff or anything like that, um, he's just, he's been a perfect fit. Um, and I think he's doing an outstanding job. And then it goes to your specialists. We're all a part of special teams, but your specialists, you know, punting, kicking, long snapping, your returners, uh, those guys are obviously critical, and you have to have talented, capable people at those spots, and we do. I mean, we have super talented people at those spots. Yeah, how nice is it when you only have to get to the opponent's 40-yard line, you're already in, in scoring range there? I think it was the 39, Jesus, but I think uh, it would have been good from 40-plus. Yeah. Uh, was there anything you were frustrated with uh, offensively in that game? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily offensively. We had a missed assignment, you know, down on that first series going in. So, of course, that's, you know, frustrating, but not with the offense, right? If someone doesn't go the right direction or whatnot, you're not going to have success. That's a walk-in touchdown. Um, uh, Obviously, if we had, look, we were off to a great start. You know, defense, um, three and out after we kicked the ball through the end zone, three and out. We knew uh, that we had an opportunity for a blocked punt, worked on it all week, got the blocked punt, went right down, you know, to the three-yard line and, and didn't punch it in. Um, we had another opportunity um, that was a sure touchdown um, and just, you know, a couple feet away from execution. Um, and, you know, so settled for field goals. Um, and we created opportunities and just didn't capitalize. So there's a lot of ifs and ands and would haves and all of those things. Um, but there's also facts with that. I mean, we played really good football, you know, for the until, what, four minutes left in the first half. Um, 
but during those 26 minutes, we still didn't capitalize on, on opportunities. When we turned the ball over, and then it was followed by, you know, Washington going forward on fourth and one deep in their own area and getting the explosive, that, that ended up being, you know, a turning point in the game. Up until that point, you know, we're winning the football game, not only on the scoreboard, but we're, we're beating them. Um, so it's frustrating that we didn't capitalize on opportunities that we created to have a different outcome. Uh, that's the way that I would say it. As you look at Jacksonville State this week, how different did they look than the team we saw down there a year ago? So offensively, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's not a whole lot different. They're the fastest team in the country. It's, you know, they'll, they'll spread you out. They go super fast. They have quarterbacks that are dual athletes that really run the ball well. They have two of them like they did last year. Um, one's the same, one's new. And so uh, they're very, very difficult in, in terms of their tempo. And then so much of it ends up being option football. Uh, so it is a, uh, it, it's a massive challenge. How different is it from last year? It's, it's not, a, not a ton different. Coach, just looking back at Washington, <clears throat> sorry, really quickly. When it comes to like messaging, messaging to your team and like trying to like move forward, is there any degree of looking at the Washington game and saying, hey, maybe that might be the best defense we see all year in terms of like talent and coaching pedigree? Or is that going to be like, I don't know, is that, is that a fair like assessment to make this early in the year? Oh, I have no idea, yeah. I, I have no idea if that'll be the best defense that we face. Um, Yeah, I think it's way too early in the year to say that. I mean, it, it was a good defense. Again, we felt as though other than, uh, you know, finishing some drives and, you know, we turned the ball over at a, it's never an opportune time to do that. Um, and then and things got away from us a little bit in the second half, right? I mean, our, we weren't able to um, move the ball in the air. We had some, you know, protection issues and, it's always a group project, right? That doesn't mean that the offensive line could be coverage downfield and could be missed assignments by other people. But um, so we did not play um, in the second half as a team like we did, you know, in those first 26 minutes. But uh, it's tough to say, you know, whether that be the best team or defense that we faced. Uh, with some of the, you know, some of the newer young guys that like have been starting or have been playing more on defense, specifically with uh, JV and Norman and Jordan Tony too. You know, what's it like for you guys to have a culture of a secondary where you guys can accept these young first year, second year college athletes and for them to perform in the secondary and do well there? Well, it's, you know, it's to their credit, you know, I mean, Coach Prince and uh, has, has done a great job recruiting great people who are super talented. Um, you know, most guys, you know, that come in January give themselves way more of an opportunity to be ready in the fall. Uh, you mentioned Jordan Tony. you know, he would be an example of that. Uh, uh, Javion Norman's a year older than him, but also um, came early. And um, yeah, I mean, we're playing a lot of depth um, in, our, in our secondary right now, and those guys are young. Um, this is an incredible experience for them. And I think with, with Cole Snyder, a lot of people will look at the passing stats and maybe even just like the one fumble that he had in the game. But still running the ball, he did pretty well on the scrambles, made some opportunities. What's it like for him, you know, having a quarterback that can, maybe people might not want to label him as a dual threat, but he absolutely can make the first down runs. What's it like for, you know, for you to have a guy like that that can make those decisions? Well, I, I've said before, I mean, it's just, it, the, the bare minimum is somebody that has the feet to be able to manipulate a pocket and to stay alive, right? And then it's to keep defenses honest in a zone read game. And he certainly can do that. You know, Cole, Cole's smart. Um, and he is really learning and knowing our offense and how it applies to the defense. And um, so he's doing a really good job of just executing and, and running the offense. And he's a good athlete. Right, so yeah, we're not going to have a bunch of designed quarterback runs and expect him to rush for 100 yards, but he he can keep you honest and and, and make the plays, and he's showing that. 
for you and your coaching staff, there's two ways of kind of looking at this game. One, there's the context of this season having, you know, fresh off of last weekend, but there's also remembering last year going to Jacksonville State and losing 21 nothing. What's kind of the challenge for your coaching staff to get right this game? Yeah, so for our defensive staff, you know, it's playing um, their offense again. Um, and we did things well last year defensively, and they also rushed for, you know, 250 yards. We, as an offense last year, there was very little complimentary football. We, we just, we didn't give our defense um, hope or, you know, just breath because we just did not get it done offensively last year's arguably our worst game um, of the season. Um, it's a different defensive coordinator. Uh, the defense isn't completely different, uh, but it is, there are nuances, you know, that are different. Um, we're a different offense uh, than we were last year. And so the challenge, you know, we're not um, necessarily spending a lot of time on watching offensively, watching, you know, uh, last year's film, um, and uh, we're putting the plan together right now. But they're they are a fast and physical uh, defense. I mean, those guys trigger, and uh, yeah, I mean, so we've got to put together a great plan. Thank you. Uh, going back to the Washington game, uh, the offense had some success on fourth downs, uh, going to up three. Can you share some thoughts on the decision making process through that? Yeah, the, the first one, um, we got down to the three-yard line and first drive of the game after the block punt, you know, you want to score a touchdown. We, we're going to have to score touchdowns to, uh, to win that game. Um, so I don't regret that. I wish, obviously, we would have scored. Um, you know, our, our other fourth down, I think we had a real fourth and short and went uh, with tempo and snuck it and so it's all part of the game plan decision making process that we do throughout the week um, so there there are decisions that need to be made during the course of the game uh, but so many of those we've thought through throughout the week and have made a preliminary decision about what we do in those situations so um, yeah I wish we were three for three Yeah, again, um, I mean, they're a, a spread, super fast um, option, I would call it, offense. Um, I mean, they're the fastest team in the country. It's super fast. And um, so we're going to have to be ready for that. Um, and then offensively, um, we've got to continue to be balanced and running the football and throwing the football, taking care of the football, taking the ball away. and. Um, you know, we, we can definitely get better, you know, on special teams um, and, and need to. Coach, uh, last question. Mitchell Dietzel. I haven't said his name the first two weeks, so I, I assume you're pretty happy with the way he's played so far and his contribution to special teams. Coach Teagarden showed um, Jesus and company's record-setting kick last night. And from the end zone copy, I don't, I don't, can't remember if it was the TV version or not, but uh, I mean, the snap is perfect. The hold was perfect. And the kick was perfecto. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Uh, before you depart the podium, uh, it's the third annual car show this weekend. An opportunity for people to get out, enjoy some cars at the factory. Your thoughts on year three and just how this event continues to evolve. There's so much going on. I mean, for people who have not been here to see Crosby Field, <laughs> the Phil Incarnati Athletic Center, right? And just the, the naming of that. And um, uh, it's Beautiful is not the right word, right, for the factory with our blue collar, you know, mentality. But you got to come up with some great word, Greg, because it's uh, it's awesome. So there's that. It's our first Eagle Walk. It's our first home game uh, for our student body to be able to 
to come and be there. And on top of all of that, it's the third annual car show. And marketing has told me there's going to be over 100 cars. Um, it's going to be a phenomenal night. Okay. Hey Zeus. Hey Zeus, you you dealt with some leg issues last year. One, how do you feel now, health wise, and and t take us through that record setting kick? Yeah, I mean, I feel really good, and it's all because of a team behind the team. Uh, shout out to the trainers, Steve, uh, Alyssa, Dave. Uh, we went through hell, I would say. Uh, shout out to DMAC, Brides of the Strength staff. It was rough, I would say, eight months, even a year. But I mean, we knew it was going to be hard, but we knew the decisions we were, gonna, we were making were going to help me in the long run. I mean, I could have uh, done surgery, and I talked with Steve. We talked about it for a month. We we're like, I don't know, like this area doesn't even exist. It would be something new. So we, he found ways, because it was Steve and, and that group uh, to help me. And then, I mean, that kick, like Coach said, it was Jesus and company. It's not me. Like, I will never be able to snap, then drop kick it, and then make it. Like, that's impossible. Like, protection was perfect. Uh, the snap, the, it's, he's, he's been amazing. And then Mitch, he, he knows me. He knows what I need in that hold, and then I trust him with my life, so yeah. Were you surprised when they called on you in that situation from that distance? Um, I want to say a little bit. Like before, before in uh, warm-ups, I told him my line going that way. And I, I don't even remember uh, how far we were from the first down, but I guess, I mean, they trust me, so I appreciate that. So yeah, I mean, just a little bit. Your family was there at the game? Yep. What was the response to Huskies fans to to your family after they found out they're the parents of the kicker? <laughs> it was funny because uh, they were walking by a lake close and they just saw a couple of Huskies fans, uh, kind of drunk, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> they just asked, like, uh, who were they cheering for? And they said it was me. And then they started taking pictures with them and just saying, like, good kicks and stuff. But I mean, for my family, to experience that, not even for me, because I mean, I don't want to say I've experienced it, but it's, I don't want to say it's also new for me, but for them, just having people from the opposing team just walk to them and be like, hey, like your son is amazing or your son has a, has a good leg, even especially for my dad, because he worked so hard for me just to be here, and they make such a sacrifice just to fly to Washington or to every game they can really. It's just awesome for them to experience it. Thank you, Aces. Um, yeah, uh, to that note, you know, I don't know how, how deep into details you want to get, but like, what kind of like sacrifices or what kind of work did your family have to do just to put you in this position to kick balls at Eastern Michigan? Well, <laughs> we can go back three years. I mean, uh, when I started kicking, at first I, did, I just wanted to play football in Mexico, so I just told my dad, hey, I want to play college here. Uh, so then he said, okay, if you want to be a kicker, you're going to be the best one. So you're going to train with the best one. So he went out looking, going to every college football game in Mexico, just asking who the kicker was for those teams. And just asking, like, hey, can you train my son? So that's how it started. And then he did the same, like, two or three times. And then just uh, going to kicking camps. I mean, we flew over then 13 times to America. And I don't want to. I mean, it's expensive, especially from Mexico. So all that sacrifice, uh, not working for a week, or even when COVID hit, I remember uh, my high school clothes, so I couldn't kick. He went out at least, I would say for at least a day, looking for a field where I could kick. And then we found the soccer field. We didn't have the uprights. What did he do? He made the uprights. And then just uh, uh, paying school my first year and then my my sister my mom just supporting me throughout everything through the good and bad so yeah how did he make up rights um he bought like the pvc pipes okay and then he just with tape and i don't know he just like a, i don't know what he did like, but it was amazing i think i have, I have some pictures of it he made out of nowhere and then 
would just show up to the field and then set it up. Then I would kick, then he would put it down and just keep it there. Two records in one day at Washington, one for the 57, one for having two 50s in a day. Uh, did either time before you even like heard or someone whispered in your ear, hey, that was a record, did either of them feel like records to you? Or like what, what was that like for you? Uh, I would just say the first one, really. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it looked kind of far from I was standing on the field, but I mean, I trust myself. I know I've been working so hard for this. It didn't, it didn't affect me. And the second one is just a 50 yard, right? I can do it in my sleep, yeah. Uh, we already talked about how, you know, in special teams, you can't do it alone. And when people think about special teams, usually it's in terms of you as a kicker or, um, or in the funny game too. But really with special teams, you know, Mitch Dietzel, we already shouted him out. Yeah. Sterling Miles even blocked yeah. another PAT. Uh, what's it like just watching the special teams group, you being part of it too, just watching you guys being able to get it done more than one or two ways? It's awesome because uh, the whole team knows and we, like everyone knows, if you talk about Eastern Michigan, you know, you're going to talk about special teams, you know? So the whole team cares about special teams. We know it's, it's one of our ways to win games. So it's awesome just to see guys go out and make plays. For example, oh, the block punt, I think it was David Carter, I think. Or just people just showing up on game day and just doing it. Uh, we have uh, Joey Matter uh, in block punt too. I mean, everyone, it's just awesome to see everyone contribute to it. What do you remember about you know your special teams units, like in the Jacksonville State game, obviously you didn't have an opportunity to kick out there. Um, but what do you remember about just like the Jacksonville State trip last year and what do you want to get right this week? I think uh, from what I remember last year was a really good game for uh, Mitch. He had like a, what, 70 yard punt? Yeah, he did. Yeah, 72. I mean, you don't want to punt in football games, <laughs> but if you're going to punt, at least you're going to hit a, a ball like that. So, I mean, just I think, in, I don't know, just don't punt a lot. A lot of field goals, I hope a lot of PATs. Just let me get one field goal, I'll be happy. Then, I don't know, uh, we can help the team with uh, kickoff return, punt block, whatever. Just help, uh, provide the winning edge, like we say in our meetings, provide the winning edge uh, and make game-changing plays for a team. Thank you. Kicking, off, kicking all the Eastern Michigan points in a challenging game like Washington's, how do you manage the pressure in those situations? Um, I just do my job. It's, uh, I mean, it's pressure, but uh, I think I was built for this, really. Uh, I love the pressure, so even I enjoy it. So I, I could play a game. I could play 12 games at that stadium the whole year. I don't mind it. The, like the noise, the pressure of the student section, whatever you want to say, I enjoy it. So I, I just go out there and do my job. Yeah. And how do you mentally Yeah, I just visualize. I know I just trust myself. I mean, it's it's a routine for me. Like, I kick into the net first, second, and uh, before third down, and then I walk. And then I like to jog into the field just looking at the operates from behind so I can see them, like, get big. So it's just a routine that I've been, I've been uh, practicing for the last three, four years.